than nuclear weapons. And, I said and, potentially. <laughs> and, and, well, it goes on. It goes on. And it you does say, go on. You, you, say, you say that it's like summoning the demon. Could be. <laughs> How do you consolidate, rationalize the, the, the conflict between artificial intelligence, of course, deep learning that, that obviously is going to be very important to self-driving cars? How do you think through that? Well, I, I don't think we have to worry about uh, autonomous cars because that's sort of like a narrow form of AI. Um, and it's not, not something that I think is very difficult, actually. I think the, to, to do autonomous driving to a degree that's much safer than a person is much easier than people think. Yeah, right. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm, I think it's going to just become normal. Like, it would be like an elevator. Like, no, they used to have elevator operators. Mm -hmm. um, and then we, you know, we, we developed some simple circuitry to have elevators just automatically come to the floor that you, you're at and you can mm -hmm. just press the button. You, n nobody needs to operate the elevator. Um, it's, the car is just going to be like that. Mm -hmm. And the elevators these days are even smart. I mean, it knows, it knows where to position an elevator so, so that uh, if you were to need an elevator, it's pretty close to you. Cars in the future will be pretty smart about that too. Yeah, you'll be able to tell your car, like, take me home, uh, go here, go there, anything. Mm -hmm. um, and it'll just do it. Now and, you guys and, yeah, at an order of magnitude safer than a person. Mm -hmm. and in fact, in the, in the distant future, I think it's probably going to be uh, it, it, people may outlaw driving cars mm -hmm. uh, because it's too dangerous. Like, you, you can't have a person driving a two ton death machine. <laughs> now, if we, if we have the right type of intelligence in a car, we, we also don't have to make the cars that heavy. I would think. You know, cars are getting yeah. heavier and heavier and it's got more and more stuff in it because it needs to survive all these incredible collisions and things like that. If, I wonder if, if we were to, to, to design cars that, that just simply don't collide as much, um, I wonder if we could, we could uh, relax on some of those laws and, and yeah. make cars more fuel efficient and lighter and better to drive. You could definitely do that. If you could count on not, a not having an accident, then you can uh, get, get rid of a huge amount of the crash structure and the airbags. Um, and uh, it'll be, we're a long way from that because there's always going to be some, for, for a very long time, there'll be some amount of legacy cars on the road. Um, and, and I think it, it is important to just appreciate uh, the size of the automotive industrial base. Like, it's not as though, like, when somebody makes an autonomous car that suddenly all the cars will be autonomous. It's like there's two billion of them. <laughs> okay, so the, the, the total, total number of cars and trucks on the road is, is two billion and climbing. Mm -hmm. The... Uh, capacity of car and truck production is about 100 million a year. So if tomorrow all cars were autonomous, it would take 20 years to replace the fleet, assuming the fleet stayed the same size. Arguably, it could get smaller if things were autonomous. Mm -hmm. But still, it's, it, and it, it's still you know, maybe 15 years or something. And it's not all going to transition immediately. It'll take quite a while. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, and it's the same for electrification of cars. Um, it, it changing that industrial base to be electric. I mean, if, if, if all cars were suddenly, if all cars produced were electric tomorrow, it would still take 20 years to replace the, the fleet. Mm -hmm. um, and right now it's less than 1%. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Now you, you, um, you're, you mentioned just now about, about self-driving cars being easier than people think. Now you, you have a, your vision of, of how to go from where we are today. Now my model, my P85D, has uh, lane detection, and, and so it gets a little, bzz, you know, when I get close to a to a lane, yep. uh, it detects the the uh, uh, the speed signs, and it uses a uses um, a computer vision technology to do that. And but and that's today's ADAS. What is your what is your roadmap? You know, how is that different than other people's roadmap? How do you think about how to get to self driving cars? Yeah, well. Um you, you kind of need the, the, the hardware foundation, the sort of sensor and computing foundation, and then you can keep uploading new software. At least you can with a Tesla because it's, it's always connected. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the car that you have, you'll notice like it, it's the, the features are st steadily improving. Mm -hmm. um, we now you know, have uh, active cruise control, so it'll, it'll use uh, radar and camera fusion to track the car in front of you. Um, it's going to get basically smarter and smarter even with the current hardware suite. So the current hardware suite is 360 degree ultrasonic sensors that go up to about uh, just over five meters. It's a Ford camera and a Ford radar. So we'll, we'll make, the, even with just, just that sensor suite, we can actually make uh, huge progress in autonomy. Mm -hmm. um, we can certainly make the car steer itself on, 
on a, a freeway and you know, do lane changes. Um, it, it's really, autonomy is about what level of reliability and safety uh, do you want? Um, even with the current sensor suite, we could make the car go fully autonomous, but only to, but, but not to a level of reliability that would be safe in, say, um, a uh, complex uh, urban environment at 30 miles an hour where the lane markings aren't there and mm -hmm. children could be playing mm -hmm. um, and things could be coming at you from the side. Mm -hmm. So in order to solve that, you need a, a, a bigger sensor suite um, and you need more computing power. Um, and I think what you're doing actually with uh, the Tegras in the future is, is super interesting and will really be a big enabler uh, for autonomous driving. So I think you know, we're, we're, NVIDIA is doing really great stuff on that front. I appreciate that. Yeah. And so some of the challenges that you see, what are, the te what are some of the technological hurdles that, and you know, there's all kinds of researchers in the room, there are all kinds of engineers in the room. What are, some, what are some of the technological hurdles that you think are really important for us to go tackle um, surely, surely uh, we're going to get to uh, some better cruise controls on highways. But b oh, beyond that, what are yeah. some of the things that you would like us to go focus on to tackle for the car industry? Um, well, it's it. You know, where it gets tricky is is just the um, is is that sort of urban environment around thirty or forty miles an hour. So, so like right right now, it's it's fairly easy to deal with, say, things that are. Uh, sub five to ten miles an hour because we can do that do that with the ultrasonics. Mm -hmm. We just make sure it doesn't hit anything, mm -hmm. just, right? You know, because you can always which is the right thing to do. Largely, yeah, like, <laughs> why would you want to hit anything with your car? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, at, at five to ten miles an hour, you can stop uh, within the range of the ultrasonics, mm -hmm. um, and that, then uh, from let's say ten miles an hour to um, you know, call it sort of fifty miles an hour. That that that, that area in in complex. Um, suburban environments. That's that's where uh, you, you can get a lot of um, unexpected things happening. Mm -hmm. Like let's say there's a like a road closure or a manhole cover open. Children playing is a big issue. Uh, bicycles. Mm -hmm. um, once you get above 50 miles an hour and you're in kind of a freeway environment, then it also gets easier again. Mm -hmm. Like the, right. the, the 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 set of possibilities is much reduced. Mm -hmm. um, so like so hi highway cruise is easy. Low speed is easy, intermediate is hard. Um, and so being able to recognize what, what you're seeing and make uh, the right decision in, in the suburban environment in that 10, 10 miles an hour to 50 mile an hour zone is, is the challenging portion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but, but I really think like, it's, I mean, I, I almost, this may sound a little complacent, but I almost view it as like a solved problem. Mm -hmm. Like we know exactly what to do and we'll be there in a few years. Mm -hmm. Right. That's kind of the, 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 the spirit of, of innovators. I mean, in a, in a lot of ways, in your mind, you kind of, you kind of see things solvable um, or arguably, arguably solved, and, and um, a lot of it is, is really about getting there. Yeah, we'll take autonomous cars for granted mm -hmm. in, in quite a short period of time. Mm -hmm. It's amazing how comfortable you get and how quickly you get comfortable with mm -hmm. it. Um, so, um, now, what about government, yeah. government policies? Like, one of the things that I would like to do is I would, I would just like to keep working on my email as I'm driving to work. Sure. You know, there's, there's a 30... Some people, some people do that already. <laughs> 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 like I said, I, I would like to do it without, without, uh, without breaking the law. Oh, yes. Uh, okay. uh, so so where, <laughs> where, where, do you, where, where do you think government intervention falls in, in some of this stuff? Because, you know, obviously if your car drives by itself and it does it even better than people, mm -hmm. you would like it to drive by itself. But largely the laws don't allow you to do that today. Right, absolutely. So how do we cross that bridge and, and, and how do you think about government intervention regulations? Right, so I think um, it, it'll be, from the point at which a car is definitely safer than a person. Um, there's probably at least another two or three years after that before regulators will allow that to be the case because they will want to see um, a large amount of statistical proof that it's not merely as safe as a person but much safer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think what you can do is you can run, run it in shadow mode mm -hmm. and essentially say, okay, this is, this is what the computer would have done in all these circumstances. Mm -hmm. And was there a crash or was there not? Like, what are the false positives and false negatives? Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, you know it's achieve a, a large population group and then, and then make a really clear statistical argument uh, with the regulators. Mm -hmm. And then they're going to digest that, observe it for a while, see if they agree with it. 
And, and then I think they will, because the evidence will be overwhelming. Yeah. And the evidence is actually already ver quite overwhelming that if you, if you, uh, if you uh, would, have, would have noticed a brake light in front of you on the highway and you didn't, you didn't uh, crash into it, we were in collision, right. a lot of sa lives are safe. Mm -hmm. You know, ideally, ideally hopefully, um, people don't, don't overreact with this, with this unknown technology um, and, uh, and prematurely regulate. No premature yeah. regulations. I think when it comes to public safety, I think there's, there's an argument for being you know, quite cautious and, mm -hmm. and making sure that things are okay before, before there's a change. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I mean, I, I don't think it's the case that right now there's a fully autonomous system and regulators are not approving it. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that, that could really be a substitute for people, but there will be in a few years. Mm -hmm. Now, as we get more computerized technology into these cars, and this car becomes really a software-defined car. I mean, a lot of your engineers are software engineers. I mean, that's yeah, one, of the, absolutely. one of the great things about Tesla. You guys, right here in, in Silicon Valley, you're rich with software engineers, and, and you have that, you've that computer sensibility about architecting a computer properly, designing the software properly designing the software for many generations of cars so it refines and gets better and better. And it has been getting better. I mean, the software, yeah. from the first time you sent me my Tesla uh, to the now, it's just like, it's right. unrecognizable software. Right. The first thing we try to do is uh, establish the, the hardware platform, make sure that we have the, the sensors and compute power. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so we, we do that first, even though the software is only taking advantage of a small percentage of the sensors and compute power. Um, and then we, we do uh, continuous updates uh, to make the car more and more capable. Um, and we're going to see a lot of that happen later this year. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's if I didn't have an announcement on Thursday morning, I would be saying a lot more, but yeah. <laughs> the audience doesn't understand why they have to wait until Thursday morning. You tweeted it already. You, you're announcing you're going to do an OTA. What kind of announcement is that? I'm going to do an OTA on, on Thursday. That's like a well, new product announcement. These days, it's just it's just that well, it's just saying that there's going to be a call on Thursday morning, and I will describe what's going to be in version 6.2 uh -huh. for anyone who's interested. That's so awesome, though. I'm interested. I, I get excited every time I get an OTA. And so, so um, uh, w one last question, and it's it has to do with I guess uh, something that that um, a lot of people are very concerned about, which is your car becomes a software platform, mm -hmm. and software platforms get hacked. How do you think about that? How do you think about security, and what are some of the things that we could do? to try to make, make, uh, make the car more resilient to, to uh, security attacks. Yeah, I think that that becomes really important when the cars um, are fully autonomous. I mean, mm -hmm. the, the way the cars work right now, um, every system in the car, it's assumed, could actually have a mechanical failure of some kind or, or a logic failure, a fundamental logic failure. So you can always overwhelm the, the, the braking of the car with your foot, and you can overwhelm the steering wheel with your hands. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, but but when, when there isn't a steering wheel or there isn't you know, a brake pedal or something in the, the, like you know, many years from now, th then it's really, th really dangerous. You know, cause, uh, but, but even as it is right now, wh what we spend most of our time on is making sure that it's, it's very difficult to do um, a multi-car hack. Mm -hmm. like if, if you have direct access to a car, just like if you've got direct access to a computer or, or any, even a conventional car, y you can do a lot of things to it. Mm -hmm. um, but but that, that's less of a concern than somebody being able to hack an arbitrary car or multiple cars. So that's what we, we focus our energy on is making sure that that, in, in that way, it's, it's, it's a lot like a, like a cell phone or, or a laptop. Uh, you, know, you, you, you focus on making sure that they can't, they can't or that it's very difficult for there to be any kind of system-wide hack. Mm -hmm. um, so we put a lot of effort into that, and we have third parties try to attack it. And, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and then certain parts of the, the car at, at the very fundamental level, like the drive unit controller uh, or the steering controller, have a, an additional level of security. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so somebody may be able to uh, you know, ha hack something that's uh, cosmetic, but it's much harder to hack something that's, that's actually physically dangerous. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's, there's multiple levels mm -hmm. of security. Yeah, and so this way, if you, if you were to able to penetrate maybe the infotainment system, it doesn't allow you quickly exactly. as a result of that Right. right. I mean, it may display a funny message or something, but it would not, you would not be able to then control the steering or the, the motor. Yeah. Well, the future yeah. of cars is so exciting, and the work that you guys are doing are so exciting, and it's, it's, it's great to see you guys pioneering um, these computerized cars. I mean, a lot of people think about, think about Tesla as the electric car, 
And I, but I think it's obviously more than that. It's an electric car, but yeah. it's, it's a whole computer platform on top of that. Yeah, I think, I think Tesla's, I mean, Tesla's sort of the leader in electric cars, but I think we'll also sort of be the leader in autonomous uh, cars, at least autonomous cars that people can buy. Mm -hmm. um, and and we're, we're, so we're, we're, I mean, if there's anybody interested in working on autonomous cars, we'd love to have you work at Tesla, by the way. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so we're, we're going to put a lot of effort into uh, automotive, uh, autonomous driving. Because uh -huh. uh, it's just going to be the, the default thing. Yeah. Um, and it could save a lot of lives. Yeah, to uh, save a lot of lives. And hopefully, hopefully one of these days, I could, it would be nice if NVIDIA's campus has no parking lot. Yeah. Right? That it drops us off and it meanders off to a place where the, the land's a little cheaper and, you know, and parks a whole bunch of cars there. And, and when it's time to go home, we yeah, you know, summon it, it to come. It, it will be extremely transformative, that's mm -hmm. for sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, when it comes to AI, I'm not really worried about sort of narrow, narrow AI like, like autonomous cars or like you know a, a smart air conditioning unit at, at the house or mm -hmm. something. It's more like sort of the deep intelligence mm -hmm. stuff that mm -hmm. uh, is where we need to be cautious. Mm -hmm. um, like I actually think there's many potential flavors of AI, um, and you know, we're, it, it's odd that we're at we're so close to the advent of AI. Mm -hmm. Like it's. It seems strange that we would be alive in this in this time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, well, come back every year, come yeah. back every year, and you'll see the the, the work that this this uh, group is going to do. I mean, there's so much deep learning work being done here. Uh, you have, you have a lot of engineers here as well, and I, they're, they're, uh, it's fantastic to see the, the the whole community focused on advancing this field. And along the way, we're going to spin off a whole bunch of new capabilities, as you know, that's going to make cars just safer and more fun to drive. Um, long before we have to get to to essentially a self-driving car. Right. There's going to be a lot of versions along the way that's just going to bring joy to a lot of people. Yeah, absolutely. I just hope there's something left for us humans to do. <laughs> well, I'm not going to let, <laughs> let go of my steering wheel. You know, I've got mine on, right. on the craziness mode and it's the sports mode, steering yeah. mode. Uh, is that the way you have it? Um, you, know, how do you, I, you, you get driven to work now. No, no I, uh, well, I, I drive half the time actually. And which mode do you have it in? I always have it in insane mode. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, Elon, thank you. All right.